Before we jump into today's topic, let's first explain how animals usually go about grazing in a new area, and why you should be looking at the variation of your animals, the plant life, and the conditions around you before you decide which grazing system is superior to the other. Typically, livestock will go over their designated patch, first eating the most delectable morsels, or the candy as we like to call it. When the candy is all gone, they then move on to the less nutritionally dense plants, or the ones that aren't necessarily as tasty as the first wave was. And when these are gone, and enough time has gone by, the rest of the foliage that is left will most likely be trampled beneath their heavy hooves. Goats and pigs are the least likely to enjoy one set of foliage over the rest. They'll eat anything down to the roots if they're given enough time, and their digestive tracts can handle things that are usually poisonous to other animals. Bovines, on the other hand, will be much more selective about what they eat, horses being the most finicky of the lot. And sheep fall somewhere in the middle, depending on what particular breed you're working with. This also will vary amongst breeds of animals. So what about the difference between the total graze and partial graze? Well, simply put, total grazing will be the act of leaving them on that patch of land until everything is eaten, down to the stubs. When everything is finally gone, the soil is left to rest until the next grazing cycle. Partial grazing is when you leave your animals to run for a shorter time period. Many farmers advocate for half grazed and half trampled on field before they are moved to the next pasture. The argument here is that the trampled forage leaves more ground cover and helps protect the soil. So which method is better? Both sides of the argument have some good points to make, and each one has its own downsides too. So let's get into it, starting with total grazing. In the total graze system, you are removing all mass above the soil, but that still leaves a network of roots underground and a seed bank in the soil to regenerate. The layer of manure provides fertilization, and the impact of hooves benefits the plant life cycle, giving the plants plenty of ammo to come back bigger and better. The pro argument says that this system is maximizing forage. The animals don't only get the candy, but end up consuming all forage available. This is also important to think about weeds. They are given equal pressure to be suppressed, so other forages have a good chance to get re-established. What might be a negative in this scenario is it could take the plants longer to regenerate and leaves the soil exposed. Since we have stripped forage of their leaves that allow them to take in sunlight and grow, it will take longer to get restarted. The real concern to look out for is the runoff when it is exposed at this level. With less organic mass to keep the soil in place, that could spell erosion that can quickly carry away precious topsoil. Keep in mind, there are still roots in the ground, so it's not a total loss, but the ground is more exposed through this method. Additionally, with the soil exposed, you will face higher moisture loss, which can damage soil systems and lead to further soil deterioration. Many farmers advocate for only doing total grazing during periods of rainfall where the soil can stay hydrated. If the conditions are so harsh that plants cannot start to regrow, you're looking at desertification and increased work to restore good soil health. Partial grazing encourages quicker movement to a new pasture. The basic rule of thumb is graze a third, trample a third, leave a third, but this can be adjusted based on your goals. The idea is to keep the ground covered either by growing forage or trampled forage. This prevents erosion, but also adds a carbon layer to mix with the manure, which builds soil. This also leaves the foliage able to still absorb some sunlight and send nutrition to the roots. This helps keep a protective cover on the soil, which helps retain moisture levels, which encourages good soil microbial activity. One of the downsides is that your animals won't be forced to eat as much of the less palatable forage. They'll be going after that delicious candy forage, but there will always be other healthy options for them that they'd rather pass up, just because it doesn't taste as good. In the same way that our kids need to eat their vegetables because they're good for them, your cows need to suck it up and eat their veggies too. This behavior can be remedied though, as animals learn how to work in a rotational grazing system, and certain breeds may be more prone to selective eating than others. Some farmers advocate for moving animal pastures multiple times a day as it encourages the grazing pattern similar to the buffalo. That pattern teaches them to eat what's in front of them rather than to pick and choose as they go. When animals are focusing heavily on just a small selection of plants, that could lead to less desirable plants taking over. That is why it's important to leave a bank of desirables. 
If grazed down to just the undesirables, the weeds have an advantage that they haven't been damaged and are recently fertilized by manure to boot. Some of the issues of stocking density can be alleviated by improved grazing practices. If you think about a field with 5 sheep versus a field with 25 sheep, the more densely the field is packed, the more it is going to get trampled, pushing those less desirable plants down, addressing the weed issue. One of the worst things you can do is leave the less desirable plants standing while everything you wanted has been compromised. It is important to note both have their place. If you want to re-establish a type of forage, total graze makes sense if you're going to seed a specific crop or crop mix. Total grazes take far longer to make a comeback versus partial grazes which can recover much more quickly. Another thing to note from farmers is that heavier grazes tend to spur the forage to grow back denser. As with many plants that are attacked, they attempt to come back stronger to survive. While this will work a few times, this is not something a plant can sustain continually, so a mix of partial graze and total graze might be ideal in your pasture management plan. The last point to consider is to run multiple animals over a stretch of land. Each set of livestock will consider different things as the most tasty morsels. That way, you have a greater variation of what is eaten without placing too much pressure on just a handful of plant species, allowing inedible weeds to take their place when they're gone. Poultry are also a great cleanup crew to consider. Their nitrogen-heavy manure can provide a lot of regeneration benefits to the soil and speed up recovery. They can also break up other animals' manures, giving them a good spread and further lending to even fertilization. So what system do you prefer? Do you total graze or partial graze? What about this system works better for you? If you found this helpful, give us a like and subscribe, and we will keep working to share regenerative content.